Hello everybody, my name is Dratnos, and welcome to the new game that we're going to be playing here on this channel for a bit. Uh, we're going to do a playthrough of this, it's called Expeditions Viking. Uh, it's an adventure, story-driven game. I've actually I've kept myself in the dark intentionally about many of the details. I know there's some profanity and violence, but other than that, should be a pretty fun one here. Uh, we're in a character creation screen, I've picked a hard difficulty and I've turned on Iron Man mode so I can't reload any saves. Uh, if something goes wrong, I prefer playing that way. It's uh, Otherwise, stuff doesn't really matter, huh? right? Okay, so uh, now we got kind of a standard RPG-style look at primary stats. I guess we got to kind of figure out what our character is going to be about. Um, so let's see. We could, we could be a strength-based character, which gives us good, obviously, attack with axes, swords, and stuff makes us stronger against physical damage, too. Uh, so if we wanted to be like a warrior, that would be the stat we'd go for. Endurance, okay, so endurance and strength would be the two we'd go for if we were kind of big, tanky people, and we could go in either direction with those to make ourselves more offensive or defensive. And then finesse, uh, looks like that's the kind of stealth slash ranged DPS stat, whereas perception is also a ranged DPS stat, but it's uh, accuracy. And also, let's give you extra dialogue options. Okay, and then sense is for magic and stuff. Okay. And then I can also pick some skills. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna be a strength bait. I'm gonna put three points into strength and one point into endurance, because I like doing that when I don't know too much about a game. Uh, it's always kind of a reliable choice uh, to be somebody that goes, because some games, you know, you try and play something that can't do well in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and the game just forces you to do that anyway. Um, then I have 50 skill points, wow. And I can upgrade my skills with a bunch of different weapons here and shields and stuff, as well as unarmed. I can also get some offensive skills. Oh, but this, these cost more than one skill point each, so each of these has a different skill point cost. Um, then I can get support skills, like leadership and protecting people. And then I can get utility skills, all right, so Cooking, crafting, diplomacy, that kind of stuff. Interesting. All right. I imagine I'm going to want diplomacy to open up extra options. And then passive skills. These have a lower adrenaline or upgrade cost than the other stuff. And looks like these are kind of situational and minor upgrades that you'd kind of want for specific encounters, maybe, if you knew what you were going up against, which obviously I don't. Uh, so I don't really know which of these are going to be particularly good. Let's start by picking out which weapon we're going to want to be in and put some extra points in that. So our, our choices are axe or sword. Swords are medium damage, medium critical, so our axes are... Right, well, I think swords look cooler. So let's put some points into that. And if I put up to rank 3, I get a heavy swing. And if I put up to rank 5, I'd get execute. Wow. That looks pretty compelling, but I, oh, okay, it gets really expensive to upgrade. Oh no, I need I need skill points, so I can't I can't buy the third out of five ranks of sword until I've spent a hundred total skill points. All right, so we'll just start uh, we'll start with two points in sword, and let's also put some points in shield, right? Two points in shield too. Um, and now I've got twenty points left to buy some extra stuff. Okay, so anticipate opening. The next attack will always be a critical attack. That seems good. Not sure if that's worth the nine skill points though. Charge. Okay, so this would let me close the gap. That's probably really good if I go up against anything that's ranged, so... Buy that, too. Uh, what else? Dual wielding. I think I want to be sword and shield, so dual wielding isn't going to be that useful for me. Faint. Interesting, okay. So it looks like this game is using an attack of opportunity system, which means when you're next to, some, to an enemy and then you move away, they're going to get a free attack on you. Uh, but using the ability faint looks like I could make that happen and not hit me, and then run away from them. Uh, but I'm not really about that running away lifestyle. Okay, interrupt. Cool, looks like everybody just gets this automatically. I can kick people one hex away. I wonder if I can use this to kick, so re rebuke, I wonder if I could use this to kick them off of like cliffs and stuff. If so, I imagine it's pretty good. If not, I imagine it's pretty situational. Maybe you could kick them into fire or something. Stun. A melee attack that applies the stunned effect, uh, even if the attack is blocked. That looks pretty good. Uh, I'm sure that's why it costs 12. 
and I only have 11 actually, so I'd have to take a point out of something. All right, uh, so I like I like the idea of charge, and I'm gonna save my skill points for other stuff here. Uh, so leadership can unlock special conversation options, and then the other one that can unlock special conversation options is diplomacy. Uh, so let's put a point into diplomacy and a point into leadership. And I think that makes us just about, yeah, I'm sure maybe there's some of these that are cheap, but we only got two skill points left, whatever, we'll use them. I bet we can carry them into, uh, into the game. Okay, uh, finish creating a character. I haven't spent all my skill points yet. Am I sure I want to continue? But I can assign any leftover ones later. All right, that's good. If I if these expired, I would maybe try and like if I couldn't carry the, the two through, I'd maybe try and find a way to spend all fifty, uh, just because otherwise you're kind of losing some value. But just keeping two floating is is probably fine. All right, so uh, opening cinematic time. Your father was a great warrior and a good husband. But he was not a strong chieftain to his I hope this volume is good. As he travels to join his brothers in the halls of Valhalla, you must take his place. Our clan is beset by petty squabbles. Some amongst our people would contest your claim to leadership, as they saw discord our neighbor's plot against us. Gather your most trusted clansmen. Together you will face dangers which none can predict. You will be challenged on your leadership, your resolve, your wisdom. Build a ship and take your housecars across the sea. Power and strength for our clan must be sought outside the Norsemans. If you show yourself to be bold, the gods will follow you into battle. Your legacy will live for a thousand years beyond your time. Our clan must prevail. This looks cool! Okay, so here we are, we're in the game. Presumably it's gonna be time for a quick tutorial. Got a bunch of stuff there. Okay, yeah, some valuables, some rations, some medicine, some wood, some hides, and some thralls, which I think means slaves. Uh, it is the evening after your father's funeral. When you close your eyes, the image of his blazing ship shimmers in the dark behind your eyelids. Okay, so that in the screen in the little cinematic when we were shooting the flaming arrow at the ship, that was our, our father's funeral. It's not a common ritual this far south, but your mother, Astrodir, who hails from the land of the Geats, I don't know how to pronounce that, but that's what we're gonna do, Geats, uh, insists on it. All the Thanes, okay, those are, I think those are the leaders of clans, um, of the neighboring clans, have come to attend your feast in his honor. Your father may not have been the most successful Thane, but as a warrior, he commanded the respect of many. The guests are filing into your father's, your, longhouse. The thanes enter first, each trailing a modest group of warriors. Your mother leans in to whisper a few words of advice before she takes her seat. You should greet each of the thanes before the feast begins, but listen well to their words. Few of them would benefit from making this a smooth transition. It will be important to know where they stand. Okay, so it's our father's funeral got to talk to the people who have dialogue options, um, which we can click on them. Then the icon over my chair is a quest marker. Uh, I could turn these off for a more independent play experience. Nope, I, I need the help. I need all the help I can get. Uh, and the gold ones are mandatory objectives. Okay. And the silver ones is optional quest objectives. So it looks like I should definitely talk to at least these two people, although I technically don't have to. And I can probably talk to all the others as well. And again, looks like it's going to be mostly story-based. can zoom in and zoom out here. That's me right there, Vimunder Nutsen. That's the, that was the default name uh, that I went with. It looks like that's somebody who's related to me because that's the same last name. So let's start by talking to Skull Skullcleaver. Don't know about that name. That's a not, a not a particularly creative name. Come on, game designers. Skull Skullcleaver is the Thane of Jelling, which borders your area. Jelling is a large territory, and Skull is one of the... I'm, okay, it might be Skewl. We'll call it... we'll start calling him Skewl, but Skull Skullcleaver, actually. Sounds pretty stupid, so yeah. Uh, Skewl is one of the most powerful thanes in Jutland. Jelling has prospered under his rule. Skull Skewl pushes himself away from the table with his foot, the chair making a grinding sound across the wooden floor. 
His face shows earnest sympathy. Vimunder, my boy, so sorry about your father. If there's anything the people of Jalin can do to aid you in these trying times, don't hesitate to ask. All right, so I can be diplomatic or I can be kind of gruff here. And I wonder if maybe by being gruffer, I'll project more strength, but let's, let's, be, let's be diplomatic, let's be nice. That's very kind of you, Dane School. I, you know, his face shows earnest sympathy, so that seems reasonable to do. Of course, we must all stand together against the Frankish threat. Skule leans towards you, resting his elbow on the table. Tell me, what are your plans for this place? How will you lead our clan? Okay, so I can do... I can either tell him something, or I can do a non-answer. The non-answers would be, this is my business, uh, it's too soon for that kind of planning, and then the other things I could do are say, alright, I'll start by building the defenses, I'll start by building a ship, I'll start by earning the favor of the gods, or... I'll start by building a folk moot, which might be something for the people. Uh, I imagine, let's say I'll start by expanding our defenses. That way, even if that's not what we end up doing, maybe it'll make them less likely to attack us. You really are Nutter's son, aren't you? Just take care not to lose the touch of your people's needs in your eagerness to defend them. He lets out a deep sigh and leans back into his seat. I'm sure you know I fought with your father many years ago. We were very much of a similar inclination, he and I. The man had a real taste for battle, not like his brothers. Mark my words, Vimunder. True bonds are forged in battle, not bound in blood. He came to me for advice before he, was he mounted his last journey. On the, th the account of my ties to Kaopang, I should have warmed him better about what he was getting himself into. Okay, so there's a new proper noun. Don't know what that means yet. I could ask about it. Uh, I could also say he knew what he was getting into, but he went anyway. I'm not going to say anything else here. I'm, I, I could remain silent. Let's see if he says anything more. Ah, but I've taken too much of your time already. I know you have other guests to entertain. Perhaps we'll talk later, after a bit more mead. Okay, he nods to himself and then me, turns his attention to the food on the table. Okay, and I can press O to view my goals here. So optional, talk to the Thanes, and then I have to go take my seat to move on. Let's keep learning about this uh, this little world here. Half Danir is the Thane of a slightly larger clan that borders your lands to the east. He wears a solemn expression and nods heavily when you approach him. Nutter is in Valhol now, Vimunder. There's no doubt about it. He died doing what he loved. But while he feasts among the heroes, you're left back here to sort out the pieces. You've got your work cut out for you. What do you mean? Your father managed to make quite a few enemies in his time, most of them among his own clan. If you'll permit me to be honest, he never paid one speck of attention to the wishes or needs of his people. That's the same thing that the last person said, so this might be true. Surely you're not expecting your claim to leadership to go uncontested. Uh, let's see. I'll say, uh, no one in this clan is more suited to lead than I. I'll win them over. Well, let's hope you're right. At least it's plain for all to see you throw a fine feast. I don't know what I'm going to do with the, the swearing. I don't, I don't really want to say swear words on the video. Um, but I'll, I'll work around them, and if they come out, if they're unavoidable, I'll say them. Okay, uh, that's, the, that's the policy. Anyway, he empties his mug of mead in a single gulp, then slams the mug onto the table and calls to a thrall for a refill. Okay, so the last Thane that we have to talk to is up there, and then we could talk to any of these other people as well. Let's just talk to the Thane, and then let's advance the story here. Uh, I'm sure that the other people will get the chance to talk to later anyway. Ragn Hildur the White is the most influential of your guests. As the vassal of King Sigurdur Hringer, gonna have to read a lot of names here that are not in my native language. Uh, she is the current ruler of Denmark. She has come from the trade hub of Ribe to the south, where she presides as a Jarl. She nods politely as you approach her seat. It was a beautiful ceremony, Vimunder. I extend my condolences for your loss on behalf of Ribe and of the king. I must tell you, I advised him not to seek out the isles across the sea. I think that's Britain. We've all heard stories of the unprotected coasts and their treasures, but there's more danger than the rumors let on. I'm not surprised they claimed his life. Okay, so that's where our father died, was uh, in Britain. But at least he died with a sword in his hand. Uh, and then, ooh, I've got different icons here. Okay, so for this X looks like it'll end the conversation, yeah. And these will progress the conversation, the arrows. And then the dot, dot, dot. So the dot, dot, dot is like one that just loops around for a bit, and then we get back to here. So let's pick one that progresses the conversation. Um, thank you for accepting the invitation. We are honored you could make it. And that gave me reputation with her. So I had there was an option there as well that was more uh, 
uh, Kurt and probably would have lost reputation or at least not gained it. Of course, your father's swords will be missed in our struggles against the Franks. So it looks like we've got Franks to the south and the British Isles to the north, and those are kind of where the enemies are, and then we've got clans to our east and west. All right, uh, if, you, if you'll excuse me, I must do the rounds and enjoy the feast. Great. Let's advance the story. I bet there will be some kind of interruption during this. Following the national meet and greet, everyone toasts to your father and digs into the meal. Food covers every inch of the table, and the freshly brewed mead seems to flow endlessly. <gasps> What's going on over here? You're listening to Nafia's usual complaints about her mother when Kettle perks up and sl dis slips discreetly out of the longhouse. Outside, some pieces of pottery, some piece of pottery, crashes against the ground, and men begin to shout. In short order, the door flies open, uh, and the doorway is filled by Otar Erlingson, sword in hand. Outside, you see his brothers standing over the prone form of Ketil. Otar looks around the room with disgust. What a splendid feast for such a shit thing. All right, we're gonna swear. Whatever. There's no way around it. Otar's gaze stops on you. He raises his sword to point at you accusingly. We wonder. Your family had its chance to earn our respect, and you wasted it. Come outside and defend your honor, or we will burn this hall to the ground. Nephia jumps to her feet, already holding her knife. Her voice seethes with disgust. Otar, you miserable drunkard. How dare you attack your thane's honor during his own feast? Your family will pay for this. Otar has turned his back on you and is already walking outside. All the other guests turn their attention to you in anticipation. Your mother leans in to whisper in your ear. You have to handle this. If the other thanes think we're too weak to deal with such a blow against our family's honor. Nephia, stay here. I'll hand her, handle these Nidinger. I don't know what that means. The shield maiden shakes her head. The drunkard fool is here for a fight. I think we'll actually have to kill him this time. All right, time to go actually have to kill him. Okay, I guess we'll get to learn now how combat works here. You shouldn't leave just yet. Okay, first let's pick up a sword and a shield. Uh, so shield, sword, oh, I can pick it all, okay. Then inventory tab, all right. Drag him from the old inventory to the weapon slot. All right, and I could actually put a bow and a sword on at the same time. Cool, yeah, two sets of weapons and can freely switch between them during combat. Okay, cool, let's have our sword and shield out. And then I can also drink some mead. I can, if I, so if I drink mead once, I get strength for three turns, and if I drink it again, I get double the strength, but I lose finesse and strength for the rest of the fight. Pretty cool. Okay, out we go, out we go. I guess let's do the combat on episode two, the next episode of this series. Hope you guys enjoyed this here, episode one, and I will be back for some more the next time one of these comes out, which should be, I'll try and release these every couple days. Find out what happens outside, what the combat system in this game looks like on the next episode, which will come out in a couple days. Um, until then, throw me a subscribe, hit the notification button, and turn on notifications. Those are the things I'm supposed to say here. And yeah, see you for the next one.